Your relationship doesn't have to be a constant source of tension, but it will be unless you learn a new way of approaching relationship discord. Stick around to learn what one of the most famous couples counselors in the world tells you to do when you're fighting with your man. I'm Evan Mark Katz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love. Welcome to the Love You podcast. Keep listening to learn how to diffuse conflict within your relationship. When we're done, I'll let you know how you could apply to Love You and create a passionate relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood. So first, a quick note about me. I don't watch other people's YouTube channels. I don't subscribe to anybody else's mailing lists. It's not that I don't think other people have something valuable to say, because of course they do. But in general, I get all of my material from three different sources. Number one, coaching women live on the phone. Two, my own relationship experience, which goes back 25 years, and from reading books and articles with hard scientific data. Um, I don't listen to what other YouTube people say. So um, as an aid to you, in the show notes below, in the YouTube uh, description, I'm going to link to my bibliography so you could check out some of the books that have influenced my coaching. But I do think it's important that you know that if I'm sharing something with you, it's almost something that's never been recycled from somebody else. Today is different. I read this New York Times piece months ago um, regarding Esther Perel. Uh, she's a famous couples counselor, she's a podcaster, and she's a TED Talk giver. And most famously, she's the author of Mating in Captivity. And I found that she was offering advice that really, really resonated with me and the type of advice that I offer to my clients in Love You. That's why I wanted to share it with you today. So instead of just trying to capture the essence of what she said in this New York Times piece, I want to read a few things verbatim and then riff off of the things that she said and how it applies to your love life. So first, she says, if you start with the yes, you will fight differently. You will actually have a different argument because you could diffuse it with humor. And that's something that really resonates with me because that's the thing that keeps my wife and I together, starting with yes. Um, it's an echo of the overarching theme of Love You about being a yes person. Now, sometimes when I tell women to become a yes person, they recoil a little bit. Maybe you're doing it right now. And the argument for recoiling is, but I was a yes person in my relationship. I said yes all the time. I had no boundaries. He walked all over me. Don't tell me to be a yes person. I got it. <laughs> but that's not an argument against being a yes person. It's an argument for choosing better men. Right, so let's not muddy the waters. Being a yes person, being agreeable, trying to make your partner happy is a good quality. It just doesn't work if you have got a, don't have a partner who's committed to making you equally happy. So let's not confuse the two. So a few weeks ago, I even did a, I did a podcast about this. There was a video where you said you can't give too much. You can only give to the wrong guy. Same idea here. Being a yes person, trying to find a way to give your partner 95% of what he wants, right? Or in my case, what she wants, is the ticket to relationship happiness. If you're ever going to say no to a guy, in other words, it should be relatively sparing, right? Got to be careful with how often you say no. If you say all, no all the time, you're going to have a lot of fights, a lot of battles, right? especially when saying yes costs you nothing. So remember, saying yes to most things is a good idea. It doesn't mean that you should never say no. So rarely put down your foot, but when you do, you have to have it mean something. Right? That's when you say no. Begin by saying to yourself, what are the one or two things that they have done that I can appreciate? Otherwise, it's whatever is negative, that's what I'll highlight. And whatever is positive, I'll end up taking for granted. If we made it on time, it's because there was no traffic. And if we got there late, it's because of you. That's how relationships work, unfortunately. So the negative is attributed to the other person. And the positive is just taken, well, that's just the way it should be. And you can be all entitled about this and say, well, there's no reason I should appreciate that because I've done a whole bunch of things and you haven't appreciated them either. But the productive thing is to start with you. 
you want to change the other, you change you. Right? And that was quoting Esther Perel. It sounds a lot like the kind of things that I've talked about too, does it not? So this is a love you principle. We pay a lot of attention to how we sacrifice that one time, but we really have no idea how much our partner sacrificed for us. So we end up keeping mental score, right? who did what for whom, but once you start keeping score, you always lose. By trying to tally up all the times that you said yes to your partner and focusing on all the times he said no to you, you establish this sort of zero-sum game with winners and losers when the only way to win is to not keep score. So Peril's example, and she used in this New York Times piece, really <laughs> hit me straight in the heart. If we made it on time, there was no traffic. If we got there late, it's because of you. Guilty. That is ex the exact dynamic that plays out in my marriage because of my meticulousness and punctuality and my wife's propensity to do as many things as possible up until the last minute. <laughs> so this article made me really conscious that it's always better to lead with appreciation and affirmation instead of constant criticism. In our marriage, we just argue when it comes to how to get things done. Right? Now, that could accomplish a lot of things. Right? That's planning for a party, packing for a vacation, doing a family holiday. Anything that requires some preparation turns into the same dynamic. My wife, lover, <laughs> thinks that we need to plan like our lives depended on it. I don't see this as the same life and death situation. And the consequences is that there's friction because there's a finite amount of time and we choose to use it differently. So we, we took one less day of our honeymoon in Thailand because my wife needed an entire 24 hours to pack after our wedding, even though we knew our wedding was coming up for six months. Um, a four hour Saturday barbecue with another family may take up Friday night, all of Saturday and half of Sunday. And Again, two reasonable people could disagree. My wife thinks that this is normal and healthy, and this is what needs to be done to pull off a good party or a good vacation. I think we can get by with a lot less effort. You don't need to pull three straight all-nighters to make a spreadsheet with the weather plan for different out outfits and for morning and night and accessorize all your earrings <laughs> with each outfit. But my wife disagrees. This is the way she wants to do things. This is the way she's comfortable, and it brings her joy to do it. And because she's an autonomous human being, she gets her way. And I lose my wife for a week <laughs> around every party and holiday and trip. So how do we deal with the fact that we just view the world differently? And this is the, literally the only thing we fight about in our entire marriage. How do we deal with the fact that we view this differently and place different importance on things? Humor, resignation, love. I joke about her way of doing things. I'm doing it with you right now. I make ample use of reading my phone or trying to sleep when she has the light on at 4 a.m. trying to put on every single outfit before we go away. And ultimately, I recognize and try to embrace that this is who I married. And that the positive part of my wife's OCD is that she thinks of everything legitimately and she prepares everything and she throws one great party. So that's what Peril meant when she said to appreciate the positive. As frustrated as I might be by my wife's methodology, which is different than mine and may disagree with the amount of time she spends to be perfect, I always remember to compliment her. It just happened yesterday. We had two families over. I always remember to compliment her because this is something she takes pride in. It takes effort and it doesn't always come naturally to me, but leading with praise is far more effective for our relationship than leading with criticism. Once criticism becomes the default language in your marriage, you're in trouble because it's hard to focus on the positives when all you see are the negatives. This is the next step in what Peril wrote in this New York Times piece. I would say that it's really important to normalize this. You know that this is what happens to couples under stress. They will turn on each other. They will take things out on each other because they don't feel they can control the bigger picture. This is normal. Instead of fighting about it, just admit it together and go from the I and you to the we. 
if you could think about that third party called the relationship and do certain things because the relationship needs it, even if it's not what you need, that will give you a very helpful framework. So this is month five of my Love You course at great length. There's a section specifically on one topic, a whole week called How to Talk with Men. Now, all relationship discussions have to start from a place of problem solving rather than attacking. So if I'm talking to my wife and I, you know, I can't, I'm not going to get anywhere telling her my bluntest feelings. It's, I think it's silly for you to spend this much time packing. That's it's not constructive. It's not helpful. So what I will say is, honey, is there anything I could do to help? Or you seem really tired and burned out. Maybe you should call it a night. The focus is on making her feel better, how to solve the problem as a team, rather than attacking her for being at the root of her own problem. Now, to be clear, this doesn't necessarily change anything. My wife is still going to do whatever she does regardless of my opinion, but she will be left with the feeling that I care about her and I want to support her and I'm part of a team-oriented solution. So this is, a, again, a sort of a universal principle. Challenges in life right, are an opportunity for problem solving. Disagreements in, in, within a couple are an opportunity for problem solving, even getting closer. The problem is when we make it about us. It's not about what you want or what I want. It's about what we're going to do to fix the situation that's in front of us, just to solve the problem. And if a solution works for one person and it doesn't work for the other, the problem isn't really solved. Okay, I'm sharing a story from this this past week. My wife decided she wanted to throw my son an eighth birthday party even though we celebrated as a family the weekend before, even though we did a special dinner, even though we bought him gifts, my wife wanted to invite friends of his over to watch a socially distanced movie on a projector in our backyard. The issue, of course, is that my son has very few close friends in second grade, and we didn't have a projector to do this. So my wife went and researched projectors, purchased one, only to discover it wasn't entirely compatible with our streaming services, and then she spent hours tweaking and testing it, discovering the sound wasn't loud enough and trying to find backup sound, all to ensure that two kids could watch Pirates of the Caribbean for my son's eighth birthday in the backyard. And that's his third party of the week. Now, it's my perspective. I adore my son, but to me, it wasn't worth all this trouble. My wife did, and so she took it on. And all I could do when she was struggling with what she took on was to look her in the eye and hug her when she told me how difficult it was to put together an outdoor movie party at our house during a quarantine. Now, I can't change her, but she's my favorite person in the world, and I could support her emotionally, and my needs are secondary in this situation. Our relationship needs patience and support in that moment. Right? And as it turns out, after all was said and done, she was right. Throwing this party made him so happy. My son was bursting because he hasn't been around his friends for six months. She, he was so happy, and I felt petty for thinking this was a waste of time just because I wouldn't have taken the same time to do it. So that's the thing is sometimes you get the opportunity to realize, ah, my natural instincts aren't always right just because I feel a certain way doesn't mean it's right or universally right because all of that effort turned out to make my son really, really happy and he's gonna be coasting on that memory for a pretty long time. So to wrap up this piece about your, making your relationship more important than your desires, my wife asked me last month, you know, what should, what should we do for your birthday? And I told her all I wanted to do <laughs> was to be able to make decisions for one day. I get to choose how long we stay in the pool. I get to choose the board game we play. I get to choose the dinner and the movie. And that was my one special day because I didn't have to compromise for that one day. But the rest of the time, it's about us, everybody. It's not about me. And any person who doesn't fundamentally get that is someone you shouldn't even consider as a long-term relationship partner. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Thank you for tuning into the Love You Podcast. For more episodes like this on YouTube, click the subscribe button and ring the bell and choose all to ensure you get notified whenever new content comes out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share an honest review on Apple. More reviews equals more awareness of the Love You Podcast and more love in the world. 
And if you want to find love right now and are committed to making healthier choices with men, to have an easy relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood, look for the link below and apply for Coaching and Love You. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon.